At the heart of Britain's vast rail network is Birmingham New Street Station. It's full and standing. We ain't going no one else on this. This is Britain's busiest interchange. Can we just confirm 11A, one mic, 72, over. A train departs every 37 seconds. Everybody's going home. I'm happy. Serving over 40 million passengers a year. Don't push, you won't go anywhere. Good work and everything. You never ever know what's going to be happening next. Merry Christmas. All human life is here. Everywhere we go. Laid bare. Sometimes literally. What's his name? Banksy. <laughs> but with such a tightly run system... Confirmed person struck by a train at Wolverhampton railway station. Any incident has a domino effect. For God's sake, what is causing it is just absolutely shocking. Pathetic. And can cause chaos. This is the worst it's ever been. Worst I've ever been on a train. £100 that tickets cost me. Three slots here or a bunch of... With unprecedented access to Network Rail's command centres... It could get really bad later. I think we're going to have a lot of people who get stranded here. ..the frontline staff... All I can say, I'm sorry, there's nothing else we can do. ..drivers in the cab... 80 mile an hour, this is going to hurt. ..and the orange army of trackside staff that keep the railways running. Ah, oh, got me sucks! If a train went through that at low speed, potential derailment. At a time when rail companies are facing greater criticism than ever. We're under a microscope from all angles, and it's stressful. Our cameras get up close and personal. She's in labour. Yeah. She's having a baby in the street, by the looks of it. And blow the whistle on just what it takes to keep Britain's trains on time. You need to sign away from the train. Be my future wife. And on track. Welcome to New Street Station. Nothing like it. Yep, front four coaches. Is going to Wolverhampton? Wolverhampton, yes, love. Platform six. Up the escalators, turn right. Yeah. It's Thursday afternoon in Birmingham New Street. Already today, 90,000 passengers have used the station. And so far, so good. So far, that is. Watch your backs, please! I come to work and I enjoy myself every single day. When it's like this, uh, all trains are on time, uh, no issues on the station. It's beautiful, it's a lovely place to be. Nice and gently. Guys, can you just hang on one second, OK? If you head that way, I'll come over to you, OK? Within the next 10 seconds, anything could switch. We could have disruption anywhere. If we've got a broken down train on the line, that could last three or four hours. So within seconds, it can go from one to that quite quickly. And it looks like today is one of those days. Good evening. Parts of northern England were deluged by a month's worth of rain in just 24 hours. The flooding caused widespread disruption with people trapped overnight in their cars. The rain that has caused flooding devastation in the north is now battering the West Midlands. Network Rail Control Birmingham, Mike speaking. Oh, yeah, Darren, how are you? Now, you know, there's, they're putting the speed on, don't you? Yep. Yep. Cheers, Tab, on there. So, at the moment, we've got a lot of flooding on the area, on the network, uh, because of, obviously, the weather. Worst bits at the moment are the North Warwick lines at Woodend, because that's blocked at the moment. We currently have got flooding down at Blackwell, uh, which is stopping us getting services from Bromsgrove to Bart Green and, and obviously through to Birmingham. Unfortunately, uh, we've had a train stood for about two hours. Though the train operators run the trains, it's network okay. rail that oversees trackside and stations across the entire region. Today, they've opened strategic command, which deals with the most severe incidents. Any time we have any rain, it floods there because it runs straight off the M42 into the fields and then down into the gap. At the helm today is Rob Bly. If it looks like it's really heavily raining, that's when I start getting worried. So if I wake up expecting a nice sunny day and the heavens have opened, I know it's going to be a bad day for me. So we've got a 500-minute delay that will increase, and that's just for Blackwell at the moment. 
with the risk of gridlock at New Street, it's time to pull the Orange Army off their current job. Major flooding. Boss, I'll ring you right. Because of the weather, we've had uh, some some flooding just reported. So we've got to make our way across there now, and we don't know what we're going to get when we get there. But um, we said to Brad, it's extreme. Whoa, look at this. <laughs> Engineer Ryan and his team are the first responders. This is shocking. Yeah. They said it was coming, though, didn't they? Yeah. Take it steady around here, Sam. You can never prepare and come to work and go, right, today we're doing this, because there's always that emergency that's there and ready to happen. It can be a flood one minute, it can be a tree the next minute, you're trespassing, a suicide, anything. Look at the road here. Yeah, here go, oh, yeah. God. In the extreme weather causes us that many issues. It's, it's unreal. A yellow alert has been issued across the region, which means there's likely to be disruption. That's bad, that is. Look at the water here. Right, we're going to go for it. You're gonna get flood around here, mate. Definitely. Look at it going around here. Oh, I can't believe the roads. Look at this. Once they get there, the flood is worse than they had expected. So we've got um, a pool up here, which is on the farmer's land. The pool's obviously filled, filled with water, and the water's coming down the gradient, which then comes into this drain culvert here which then subsides onto the track. But unfortunately, we've also got the water coming off the M40 too. So we've got a significant amount of water going down. Until the problem is sorted, the line will be completely closed for passenger safety. The reason that a train can't go through there is because we don't know what's going on underneath the actual water. Potentially, we've got flowing water pushing ballast out the way. If a train went through that at line speed, potential derailment. Right, come on. Okay, take one minute, guys. Watch your steps. Watch the steps well. At Birmingham New Street, the floods and cancellations are beginning to wreak havoc. I don't know if they're running, this is, this is the thing. Yeah. Where's the flooding? At Bromsgrove, and that's the. Ah, okay. yeah. It's a disaster. There's rain, there's wind. It's just a bit cold, this happens. It's insane. There's a saying about people in a brewery, that's network rail. The train's being delayed, 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 then cancelled. No notification. I've done 24 hours on call. I've had four hours sleep and 24 hours at a hospital, and I've got to be back in tomorrow. I'm just more worried about the actual ballast. Get the shovels! Get the shovels, Matt! On the track at Blackwell, Ryan and his team are battling to get the trains running safely again. What we've done is we've created a channel across just to try and relieve some sort of water and some pressure coming down from that chute there. What we'll do then is we'll move up there and we'll try and do one over there as well, just try and get it so it's lower. So I've gone through and checked the ballast, the formation, to make sure that the ballast is stable. So far, the ballast is holding firm, but it's still unsafe to run trains on it. So that's, we're just doing what we can at the moment, mate, but the water's still flowing down these flumes, so as soon as we move the water, it's just filling back up. This is potentially we're going to have to divert trains now. So they're now sort of putting a train plan together. The problem we've got now is it's approaching rush hour, so yeah. everyone's going to want to get home from work. Yeah, yeah, exactly. the, the trains are more frequent, more full, so our aim is to try and get trains running as quick as possible. Get digging, you. So, with today's trains up the Swanee, whether or not commuters make it home now depends on one man and his shovel. Platform is to be confirmed. Um, it was on platform 1B, but going to 1604. 1604. 1604. When we're caught up in disruption, us at New Street uh, can't do nothing about it. Wind, rain, acts of nature, we can't do nothing about it. Just bring a brolly, every day bring a brolly. Two hours delayed, trying to get to Kemble through Cheltenham's bar. I've got work tomorrow as well, so 
We need to get home tonight, really. <laughs> Otherwise, we're screwed. <laughs> I'm stressed. Very stressed. Crystal Temple Meads. That's not us, is it? It's to Bristol. We're not going to Bristol, though. Yes. Yeah, it's Chatham. Okay. Chatham. Right, where's my friend gone? Oh, for God's sake. Oh, oh my God. I'm not moving my arm. <laughs> This train's gonna be rammed, isn't it? Oh, is it not working? It's not working. This is not okay. Can somebody come to the escalators, please, on platform 23 B end? We're not gonna get on it. How are we gonna get on that? Oh. And as if things couldn't get any worse, Back at Blackwell, the pits which are meant to drain the water away are blocked, meaning even more water is surging onto the track. Catch, catch, me, watch your feet, mate. That's good. Oh. oh, mate, I've just gone about a foot under. It's gone over my boots and everything. Can't believe that foam. Basically, we've got the, um, got the dogs at the moment because obviously it's full of silt. All the stuff that's come off the fields, and through the tree course up there, it's gone straight into the um, catch pit, filled up with silt. So, trying to get some of that out at the moment, but it's a real tough one, to be honest with you. We're trying our absolute hardest to get this running at the moment, but we're fighting a losing battle against that, unfortunately, at the moment. Ah, oh, it's got in me socks. It's got in me socks. It's not getting any better, is it? It's definitely not getting any better. Unless they clear the flooded track soon. Oh, wow it could cause even more misery for rush hour commuters. In the West Midlands, rain has been falling since the morning, causing havoc to the rail network. There's six weeks to Christmas. Birmingham city centre is packed with festive shoppers and commuters who need to get home. Can I have your attention, please? I'm sorry to announce that 1650 West Midlands Railway Service to Hereford has been cancelled. I'd like to apologise for any delay or inconvenience caused to your journey today. At New Street Station, 16 trains have already been cancelled, and there have been many more delays. Some areas are just picking up more rain than others, and because some places are like single lined, if they're flooded, we can't get anything yeah. through them. Yeah, Is that a current then? At Blackwell, Ryan and his team are trying to tame the flood. They're going to need a bigger shovel. And daylight is fading fast. Uh, we're going to have to wait for lights now, mate. There's not much more we can do. It's extreme, isn't it, mate? This job here, I think we may, we may have under-egged it a little bit regarding when I first got here. I thought, oh, we'll just clear a few drains out and it'll move. Um, but this is a lot bigger than what we ever expected with annual rainfall predicted to rise by 10% in the next 80 years, the effect on the rail network will only get worse. I've been on the railway 18 and a half years. I've never seen anything like this. So we've got lights on the way, but obviously the network's down regarding traffic. So all the elements are against us at the moment, if you want the honest truth. In their battle against the elements, Mother Nature appears to be winning. The XX30s are all cancelled. In the warm and dry control centre... Hi, Ryan. How you doing? Operations manager Rob is calmly overseeing the growing crisis. Well, I was going to ask you how it's looking, but obviously not great. No, it's horrific, mate. It's the worst I've ever seen it. It's absolutely gushing out. It's, it's bad. Presumably it looks like we're not going to be able to run anything for a little while until the rain slowed off. Not at the moment. Not at the moment. All right, bud. Um, all right, I'll speak to you in a bit. Cheers, mate. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye. Ryan's described it as the worst flooding he's ever seen, <laughs> which, which isn't great. Some of the videos I've seen, it's fast flowing uh, and doesn't look very nice at all. Uh, so at the moment, we can't move any trains, which isn't very helpful. Because we're, we're running on, uh, well, a large amount of it is Victorian infrastructure was bought in in Victorian, in Victorian times and then it's just been grown. Getting all those trains through really does mean that sometimes we are fighting a slightly losing battle and trying to keep all of our infrastructure up to date in good order. Is it still raining? It's still very much raining. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to get more flooding then. Have confidence, have faith. Have confidence? No. 
That's our customer reception. They're raging transport from Cheltenham Spa. With parts of the line underwater, it's time for the dreaded bus replacement service. Straight down outside customer reception. They're raging transport. And although the train companies organise these, it's network rail staff that have to deliver the bad news. So there's a bus service arranged from outside customer reception, Cheltenham Spa, and then onwards to Bristol. Bus. Yep. Oh, bus! <laughs> Get that bus, unless you want to sleep here. But there's another slight problem. Wonderful. We've got no coaches. Basically, we have tried to arrange some coaches for the cross-country services that have been cancelled, um, but because they have contracts with schools, they're not sending them. Um, we were told we might be getting them by now, but, but I think because it's so flooded outside that they can't get to us. We've already sent about three or four, and we're trying to get more because once for the past couple of hours have just been cancelled. Despite the shortage of buses, irate passengers are pouring outside. Don't send any more out, mate. I'm literally to the rafters out here. Okay. And rail staff, like Andy, are still the ones in the firing line. Any idea what time they'll be? Mate, I really don't know. I sent five coaches away from here two and a half hours ago and they've not reached Cheltenham yet. So where are they now? I don't... They have a radio. They have a radio, the sure. Gone to they're, not our, they're, not, they're not our buses. They're private. They're private buses. I'm sure you can tell us, though, what time the bus is going to come. If I could tell you that, I'd tell everybody else this, sir. I really can't. I don't know where they are at this present time. So, okay. Sir, we're going to go around in circles. As soon as that coach comes up here, yeah, these people will be getting on it. You're repeating yourself 50, 60 times possibly in an hour, and it does get frustrating. But as long as you keep a cool head, you'll get through it. All I can say, I'm sorry. There's nothing else we can do, honestly. I'm always apologising if I'm at work or if I'm at home. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it just go, it goes with the job. You've got to be nice. Although a lot of the public will know it's, it's not your fault. We've been waiting here at least three and a half hours. I stopped looking at my watch because it's dispiriting. Yeah, I should be home and enjoying my time with my kids and my wife. The M5's congested, so the, 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 the coaches that are coming up are just stuck in traffic. I don't want to be out here as much as these people don't want to be out here. I get the same question time and time again, where's the coaches? I don't know. This is a bald patch, not a crystal ball. I really don't know. Is the bus expected? No, I'm standing here waiting for Christmas. <laughs> There were rail control Birmingham, Mike speaking. Over at the West Midlands Command Centre, the weather forecast shows a glimmer of hope. So it's looking like around now it's slowly starting to move westwards. Oh yeah, we're looking at where's Black Black will we're be. Looking around here. Around aren't here we? Is right, yeah. yeah. So hopefully within the next that's twenty past six, next two hours or so, it should I reckon have cleared that area. That is good news. <laughs> OK, cool. I just have to hope that <laughs> it stops in Blackwood. Oh, look at this, people. We have chips. Come on, Matt, jump in, mate. We need to get cosy. For Ryan and his team in Blackwell, a five-minute break and a chance to warm up. I'm on it, young chip. <laughs> I'm freezing. I'm absolutely freezing. Mm. Chips and also. Solid effort today, to be fair. It's been a real tough one, hasn't it? Well, it looks like it stopped raining at least. All systems go again, let's get trains running. <laughs> Guys, don't get putting stuff on there. I need to make sure I've got enough seats for everybody. Outside New Street Station, to Andy's relief, those replacement buses have finally arrived. Right to the back, please. All these lovely people, look, all smiling because they're going home eventually. As soon as I've got this full, you'll be out of here. Give me your bag, sweet, just get on. OK? Take it away, mate. See you all later, guys. We're still waiting for more coaches to come. We've still got people to get to Cheltenham. But, yeah, the big queue's gone that you've seen earlier. Success. Everybody was happy. 
There was nobody really moaning. So yeah, great success. This is me every day, happy. You gotta be happy. It rubs off on the customers if you're miserable. Smile goes a long way. And now I'm going for lunch. <laughs> Inside the station, the trains are gradually returning to normal. We're slowly starting to recover some of our service, so we're now able to run trains uh, through where we had the flooding earlier at Blackwell. We're now able to run them towards Gloucester and Bristol. Um, getting trains moving in both directions is obviously our ultimate goal, but at least we can get some passengers who I'm sure have been here and want to get home. Um, we can get them on the way home, which is really, really good news. According to Network Rail, today's floods caused 10,000 minutes of delay and cost them over a million pounds in compensation. But for Ryan, the day is far from over. Today's been the most challenging day. It's ended up with a disaster showstopper, um, with a flooding issue. Um, but it's, it's the challenges that we face day in, day out. Um, we're in a position where we have seasons here in England and obviously Snow, rain, frost, it all, has a, it all has an impact on the railway. So today's been really, really challenging. Hello, you're right. We ain't going to be home any time soon. We've got, um, it's still really badly, the flooding is, and we've got to literally stay out here till it subsides. Yeah, so I'll be home. Uh, you'll see me when you see me. All right, I'll speak to you later, bye. Bye bye, bye bye, bye. The passengers may be tucked up at home, but the team will work long into the night to clear the track and make sure it's safe. Birmingham New Street Station sees nearly one and a half million passengers a week. Which means for staff, no two days are alike. New Street Station is a very spontaneous place of many mysteries, to say the least. Welcome to New Street Station. Nothing like it. You never know what you're going to deal with on, on any day. You hear so many stories of, of what people have seen that it's not weird. You see it all. But some days are a little trickier than others. Anyone for platform one? Anyone for platform one? Can you use the red lines for me, please? Anyone for platform one? Ashton, can you get the first line? Of course. Ashton has been called to a medical emergency involving a pregnant woman. So what's happened is we've got a lady who has fallen down the stairs halfway down, but she's heavily eight months pregnant. So now she's had to get the first aid bag. Ambulance has been rang an arm on the way. She's very emotional, very scared, which is very understandable. The transport police are on the scene and it's down to station staff to keep the passenger calm while they wait for the paramedics. Yeah, we've got four in there, uh, four rolls packs. I'm just going to put this on your ankle. Does it hurt? <laughs> I've just placed it on there, I'm not pressing it. All right. Hello. Mm. Hello, so I suppose you've got any cold water, have you? Yeah, we do. The pregnant woman has fallen in the middle of the stairs which means passengers can't use them to access Platform 1. If, it, if nothing changes within the next hour, this is going to be quite, quite critical. Train dispatcher Jeanette has to find other ways for rush hour passengers to get onto the platform. Platform coordinator to Platform 1. If she can't, they'll have to take the drastic action of shutting the entire platform causing disruption to the whole station. You've got about um, 10 people that are going to be coming down in the lift shortly. 
If you close a platform during the peak time, they then have to um, re-platform trains. So it's not just re-platforming that train, potentially it's the knock-on of trains that are waiting to come into the station. You've got the last lot of passengers coming down in the lift for the Walsall train now, if it hasn't departed. To lose platform one during rush hour, I can't think of anything worse, really. With the one lift overcrowded... There is a maximum. The only other route is a trek across two other platforms. You can go via platform two, three. If you walk to the end, go across the concourse and then down onto platform one. Better hurry if you want to make your train. My train's coming in two minutes, so... OK. What you can do is you can go via platform two, three yeah. and then go across. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. My train is coming in 10 minutes, so... Uh, yes, I'm aware yeah. of that, but no, I, I was... Sorry? No, you're not, I can tell you. There's a medical emergency. I'm trying to give you an option for a faster <laughs> way for you to get to the platform. OK. okay. I, I need to escalate this because we, we can't delay trains. The situation on the stairs is about to get even more urgent. No, no further update from the paramedics just, at all. I've just caught control because mm. there's one getting into the ambulance. And she's now during time. Thank you. The woman could give birth on the stairs before the paramedics arrive. The passenger um, who's heavily pregnant is getting some tightening and also she has lost um, some water. What's more, this could bring part of the station to a standstill. We're coming up for peak time. Um, you know, are we going to have to think about closing 1A? If there's one thing we Brits can't get enough of, it's a train journey. 1.3 billion of them every year. And at the beating heart of the rail network, is Birmingham New Street Station, serviced by five different train operators. How are you doing? Right? Are you on this one? Yeah. Oh, you're in for a treat. Departing from platform 2B is the cross-country service to Bournemouth. How are you guys? All right? How are you doing? And checking your tickets today is train manager Adam. This is the cross-country service to Bournemouth. Please be advised, because there has been a change of train crew, uh, there will be a full ticket check. So can all passengers have their tickets or passes ready for inspection. If you haven't yet purchased a ticket or don't intend to buy one, if you just want to hide in the toilets now for me, that'd be great. Next station call, just under 10 minutes, will be Birmingham International. Thank you. Adam is known for his distinctive style of customer service. All right, guys, how are we doing? So um, we'll get the Twister mat out, right, shall we? <laughs> who, wants, who wants to play a bit of Twister? If you want. Yeah, let's do it. Also on the shift is long-suffering colleague, Nigel. Just for the boys, passengers, uh, I just found out today it's Nigel's birthday. Nigel is pulling the trolley through. Um, so if you'd like to wish him a happy birthday, I'm sure he won't mind too much. Um, interesting enough, uh, Nigel's favourite chocolate is Kit Kats. So if you want to treat him to a Kit Kat or two, go nuts. Thank you. Is it actually his birthday? No, it's not. <laughs> Hi right, folks, this half all uh, tickets and passes, thanks. Or tickets and passes. How do you feel? Oh, it's got more in there than bottom. Oh, that old chestnut. Whereabouts is she? Uh, somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Where are you off to anyway? Uh, Reading. That's fine, you're going the right way. That's cool. Oh. Is anyone here missing a husband? Oh, it is, mate. Yeah, yeah. I'm not missing him. You're not missing him at all? Oh. <laughs> if it's any consolation, he's in tears. Is he? Yeah, yeah he's in tears. Probably because I've got the money. Yeah, that's it, right? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Every day is different. Is every day Nigel's birthday as well? Every day is always Nigel's birthday. Every day. Yeah, Nigel, you're what, what, 162,512? Something like that. <laughs> Looks great for his age, doesn't it, you know? Good when you've got a comedian on board, isn't it? Um, no, January, and I wouldn't be here on my birthday anyway. There's a lot of variety to the role. Every day is a different scenario. It's a great job, I love it. I love doing it. And we'll sort out your connecting train and make sure you're all right. All oh, right, thank oh, so you. No worries, you're welcome. Um, what I will ask you to do, though, if you just want to leave two quid there for me, that's like a service fee. Yeah? I normally charge everyone a tenner, so you get mates <laughs> rates today. Yeah. 
Sorry for the barriers. Go yep. over to the other side in the red line. Yeah. Back at Birmingham New Street Station, the poor pregnant woman has been stuck on the stairs for nearly an hour. You've got some uh, passengers that have come down in the lift. I have been trying to get people to go via two, three, uh, not having much success, I'm afraid. Jeanette has been redirecting passengers who need to access the platform, but she's becoming increasingly anxious about mum and baby. She's quite heavily pregnant, and I think that would... That, my heart goes out to her because, obviously, um, it, her concerns are going to be the welfare of her baby at the moment. And to be honest, that's becoming my thoughts as well now. I'm, I'm quite concerned about how she is. The ambulance finally arrives and with moments to spare. She's going into labour. She's in labour? Yeah, she's got these contractions. The ambulance has just pulled up. She's having a baby in the street, but we Amongst the station staff, news travels fast. I've never known of anybody giving birth in the station. <laughs> Not yet, anyway. For my time, yeah. I don't know. Chris, have you had many? No, I think she's, uh, I think this is a first for me as well. Best for you. We should be rushed here to get her to the hospital. But they can't move her because it's... She might have broken her ankle as well. Right. Have you ever seen a baby born in the station? I've never seen a baby born full stop. I know. <laughs> not, even, not even on television. I go, ooh. After a quick assessment, the paramedics decide it's safe to take her straight to hospital. A lot of people are not inclined to uh, want to walk uh, along 2 3 and along the concourse. Um, try to explain the situation. Oh, we may be we, we, we may be moving the lady. The screens have just moved. The stairs are open again now on 1A. Oh, 1A, it's probably not the best way that she wanted to go into labour. I'm sort of relieved that the baby wasn't born in New Street. <laughs> yeah, bless her. She's in good hands now anyway, that's what matters. You never wake up thinking that you're going to help someone give birth, but working in a train station every day is never the same. Everybody rallied round. Let's get back to normal. <laughs> She had a little boy, and he was actually born three weeks later with no complications. See, I think she should call him Thomas. <laughs> Thomas the Tank Engine. Only one minute late. Yes. <laughs> There's no more checks now, because I take this all the way to Southampton. And nice job, by the way. Thank you. No worries. With Christmas in the air, train manager Adam is back on shift on a packed train to Southampton. Guys, we're travelling together? We're travelling yeah. together. OK, no worries. Armed with his ticket no punch. What's your name? Lindsay. Lindsay, nice to meet you. Did you pick name yourself? Yeah. Oh. From birth. <laughs> From birth. Wow, from that's birth. that is impressive. And his top bands. I have tickets, please. <laughs> He's ready to bring joy to all. Hello, right, Fanny, you're right. Let's grab your um, ticket or pass, thanks. Well, nearly all. Hello, uh, mate. Grab your ticket or pass, thanks. Pardon? Ticket or pass, please. Yeah, thanks very much. That's right, where are you off to anyway? Coventry. Coventry, it's the next station, so we're nearly there now, so if you just, um, you definitely got your ticket? Yeah, just... yeah that's, that's fine, as long as you're getting off, we're nearly there, so um, as long as you've got it ready for the barriers, that's fine. Yeah. And you're going the right way as well. Perfect, cheers, no worries. Hello, mate, you're right. You're very nice, aren't you? Oh, it's very kind of you to say, I like to think I'm a nice person, you know. You can, what's it, you catch more flies with honey than you do vinegar? When I used to be on the trolley, I used to see the train manager would argue, and then they might go, right, I'm going to delay the train now until you pay this money. So you've now held the train up. Yeah, it's, it's a tough one. You've just got to really use your discretion. Cheers! As well as checking tickets, Adam is responsible for making sure the train is safe to leave the platform which can sometimes be tough when Christmas revelry is in the air. Hey, you've got to stand away from the train, we're going! 
or on the platform. Mate, you need to sign away from the train. We're going. You need to sign away from the train. Me, my future wife. Mate, you need to sign be on the other line. We're about to go, yeah? We're about to go, mate. I know when you're falling in the track, yeah? Right. Make sure you're behind this line here, yeah? Thanks. So, Romeo over there, trying to get some girl's number. If he was to fall in uh, and hurt himself, uh, we're liable for it. Hi, right, folks, any old check tickets? Thanks so much. Cheers, thank you. <laughs> How you doing? You all right? Someone's been in the past. It's about the international. Oh, OK. So you know. OK. It's not come back out. No worries. Hello, mate. You're right in there. I understand you've been in there since Birmingham. Are you okay? Not feeling too well. Okay. So yeah, so internationals nearly an hour ago. So I um, just want to make sure he's okay. Hello, mate. You're okay. Oh, I saw you. You were going to commentary, weren't you? Yeah. Okay. You had your ticket, didn't you? I just can't find him. You can't find your ticket. Okay. I've just walked to a friend. I'll just text a friend. Um, yeah. Um, is there anywhere I can get to Winchester? We'll do commentary to Winchester. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's seventy-eight pounds twenty to travel from commentary to Winchester. Okay. Um, so your best option is to go to the ticket office, have a word. If there's anything you can do with your friend, might be able to phone through to pay for you. That's the best thing I can really suggest. But make sure you get something sorted out before you board the next service, OK? All right, mate, but uh, if you're not well, just uh, just take, take care, OK? All right, no worries, thanks. As well as a lost ticket and a dicky tummy, the man could face a hefty fine, but that's not Adam's problem. It's a tough one, really. I kind of gave him the respect to sort of take him on, 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 on his word. So you are seeing you're not well. OK, well, then you can't travel because you're going to be sick. Let's get you off, you know. Not as daft as he looks, our Adam. <laughs> Perfect. You got me all the way to Southampton. All right. Christmas. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Even if it's busy, it's still always the most wonderful time of the year. We're all so happy, we're just smiling because it is what it is and it's Christmas. <laughs> and for staff at Birmingham New Street Station, it's also one of the busiest. Staff levels are tight, trains aren't on time. <laughs> Merry Christmas. It is the Christmas rush, I would say, yeah. Rushing to get there to get merry. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! <laughs> Of course, the Orange Army are on duty, whatever the season. At least it stopped raining. You can see that the little darlings have been to art school up under that bridge as well. And there is one persistent problem that plagues the network. That's a running line. That's the, de that's the up Derby slow. So they've actually crossed that railway line to do their artwork. So, an eyesore and potentially fatal. graffiti so the passengers are not constantly looking at obscene, horrible tags left, right and centre. Local manager Chris Edwards oversees the removal of graffiti. A job that costs Network Rail around three million pounds a year. There is a trespass aspect to the graffiti. We've got graffiti all over the network on structures in really high positions that's not easy to remove. You would need, in some cases, road closures. So there's, there's all manner of things to be considered before you can remove something that, yes, it looks awful, god awful. Today, he's on his way to a new piece of graffiti. Let's go and have a little look. That's popped up overnight on a railway bridge in Birmingham's jewelry quarter. And this one has caused quite a stir. Sorry, just, sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, sorry. Hi, oh, mate. Excuse me. I drove down the street and parked on the end. I noticed that there was a white tent over there with two men in high-vis. I just thought it was a workman 
doing a bit of upkeep or building work, but uh, it was Banksy. <laughs> In the jewellery quarter of Birmingham, a new piece of graffiti has appeared. This morning, the elusive Banksy took credit for the artwork on social media. I saw it on the news uh, last night and we thought we'd come and have a view because it's um, unusual and very good for the city, I think. <laughs> What's his name? Banksy. Oh, so he's been around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Banksy situation from its start to where we are now, it's probably been one of the, the most enjoyable graffiti situations I think I've had to deal with. I'll be home for Christmas. Banksy's video and the use of a local homeless man creates a poignant viral message. Snow. And mistletoe. Yeah. That's what my dad is. Ah, no, no, no. Nearly three million views on it. Anything by Banks is good, isn't it? So, great message. Homelessness. It's really good. And I like the idea that he's used the bench as like the sleigh, because wasn't there a homeless person on the other one? Yeah. Oh, can you take a Picture. Yeah, go on then. <laughs> We've got one. Even Ryan has turned up to show his appreciation. It's quite good, isn't it? It's bigger than I thought, you know. It's going to take some uh, doing, isn't it? One day you're uh, repairing the track and changing a rail, the next day you're stood at a Banksy trying to protect that. Yeah, it's unreal. The Banksy thing was a crazy day because I follow him on Twitter. Uh, so obviously I woke up in the morning, I always have a little quick look through the Twitter feed, then I noticed that this, this video had gone live with the homeless guy. Then we got into work and it was like, all hands to the pump, we've got to get to the jewellery court. I was like, why? Uh, it's our bridge. The picture could be worth a few quid. Two million, some reckon. Now it's the property of Network Rail, which puts the graffiti police in a bit of a quandary. We've got an emergency phone call. We need to go and protect the, the picture. <laughs> <laughs> Graffiti's graffiti, isn't it? We, we, rooms, don't we? We've got to put the uh, first picture on. Oh, well, I said paint over it, but nobody <laughs> listens to me. The first instance was, oh my God, we've got a Banksy. We've got our own Banksy. Brilliant, fantastic. And the next conversation was, actually, no, hang on. Given our historic knowledge of people just, you know, wanting their piece of Banksy, get their 10 cents worth, uh, we didn't want bricks to start going missing out of the wall. Chris and his team have got some perspex to cover the artwork. But as they're more used to removing graffiti than saving it, they're a little bit out of their comfort zone. Can we just think about this? You should not be rubbing against it. You should be not be pressing against we it. Are you, pushing. you are, you've got your feet, you've got your hands up there. And it seems everyone's got an opinion. Excuse me, who are you, mate? I'm a conservation architect right in the lecture at the University of Birmingham. Uh, just my advice, mate, it should be done in a much more scientific way. You can't just do that, rub about with it. OK, OK. There's a bit of concern over the way that the perspex is being put on and that it's rubbing against the artwork, trying to get it in position, and that it wasn't uh, done correctly. It's a very high stake situation here. We're under a lot of stress and we're under a microscope from all angles. And these guys have not got a great deal of experience and it's stressful. It's great for Birmingham and uh, I'm pleased that they're actually covering it up this morning so it doesn't get damaged. Kidding me. Guy, oh, you seen it? Perspex they're putting on as the wind's caught in, it's completely snapped. The pressure's got to them. I was hoping that would go a lot better. And eventually, after they find a thicker piece of perspex. Okay. The wheel will fall off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got a round of applause, we all should do that. 
over the moon now we've actually got a solid piece on with no cracks no breaks and no damage our guys are full-on superstars relentless and dedicated uh, and you get what you ask for which is a finished product that everyone can be proud of i'll be honest it's growing on me it's growing on me i don't think i could afford it absolutely fantastic well done network rail yeah, for one, it's, it's for one thing there exists. <laughs> We've got something called yes. <laughs> the 1015 train from <laughs> Leamington Spa to Birmingham last Saturday was a nightmare, but well done, Network Rail, for saving this. Absolutely brilliant. God bless Banksy. Oh, to the right. So it's. Well done, fellas. We got there in the end.